Hello, I'm Sarkis, and this is Hookah Unlimited. Today, we're going to be going over common chamber hookahs. Before we begin, don't forget to go ahead and subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell notification so that you could get notified whenever we upload a new video. This topic has a special place in my heart, mostly because the truth is a lot of people don't know how to differentiate between the three main categories of types of hookahs on the market today. Originally, there was only pretty much one kind, but ever since a few certain brands came out, uh, there's been a lot of different types and uh, ways they've decided to manufacture, engineer, and design their hookahs. And a lot of, uh, and many hookahs today share a lot of commonalities where it matters. Now, some of you guys don't know this, but the truth is that the most important part of the hookah is the heart of the hookah. And the heart is this kind of middle part of the hookah where all the little valves and everything, the, the down stem and all these things kind of come together in that piece. So for today, I have two very different hookahs that are both common chamber, just to show you guys how vast the variable is between uh, hookah to hookah regardless of the budget. The first one we have is one of the most popular hookahs ever made, uh, the Starbucks Unicus. And I mean popular by strictly sales numbers, you know. Uh, Starbucks Unicus sell faster and more often than pretty much anything on the market right now. And that's the honest truth of it. And we also have an Octopus Nautilus. Now, where the Starbucks Unicus retails at about $50 at most places, the uh, Octopus Nautilus will go for the equivalent of give or take $200 or so. Um, this is a German company. This particular one is an influencer only version of it. It's all electroplated black, stainless steel. Um, it's actually a really amazing pipe for the price, especially because it comes with uh, complete with vase, but um, it's a common chamber pipe nonetheless. The thing about common chambers you have, you have to understand is there's nothing innately wrong with them in terms of quality. Like a common chamber uh, feature doesn't distinctly equate to a bad quality hookah. Uh, however, a lot of more inexpensive, um, quote unquote, on the ground, average user, beginner level hookahs tend to be common chamber it's just because of the way they're manufactured it's a lot easier to produce those these types of hookahs than traditional chamber or um, the best type direct chamber uh, now these terminologies might be unfamiliar with you guys some of you guys but those of you who've been following me at hookah unlimited facebook group uh, which is my my community uh, you guys know about the three different kinds now there's some people that don't recognize or don't understand what I call the direct chamber and the truth is that's a term that I coined and that was only because there's a vast difference between a traditional uh, chamber hookah and a direct chamber hookah although in uh, as far as design concept goes they're very similar we'll leave that for the next few videos because this is gonna be a series now let's get to the part that really matters taking these hookahs apart and actually showing you guys what a common chamber hookah is. Now, in order to do that, we physically have to take these guys apart. Taking up apart the Unicus is not that big of a problem. It's put together pretty straightforward. Once you unscrew everything, you're left with the stem and down stem. The down stem also comes apart, leaving just the vase, down stem, and upper stem. And uh, over here, there's a little bit of a seam on this particular hookah. It seems that it was uh, originally manufactured separately. Um, however, it uh, seems to be pressure fitted because I can't take this apart. But it'll do its job because I could distinctly show you guys exactly what a common chamber is. A common chamber is defined by the fact that inside the chamber, though, inside the heart, is completely hollowed out. And the purge and the hose port share a common chamber area within the heart, okay? So if we turn this inside for you guys to look at, you see all the way through and you see the valves coming down. Now, one of the things you notice immediately is the fact that the valves come at an angle. And the biggest issue with the common chamber hookah, and I've mentioned this before in the Starbucks mini um, review that I did, I called it a hybrid of a common chamber and direct chamber. Well, the biggest issue here is the fact that whenever you purge, you're, what you're really doing is pushing uh, the smoke or air into the system, the hookah system, via the hose port. Now, in a 
traditional chamber, uh, it has leads that go that that lead the, the the air coming down straight down into the bottom of the heart into the base chamber, and the advantage of that is that it comes straight down, creating a pressure where when it purges, it purges straight out. With a common chamber, the problem is these things come, the, 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 the hose port comes at an angle and the, valve, the purge valve is also at an angle. So the uh, flow, the direction of flow of the smoke just simply comes from one angle and out the other exit because it's angled in such a way. There are some means and methods that certain brands have tried to work around to make it purge a little bit better by making the chamber very thin, as, as you see here or using a particularly wide down stem to kind of blockade the direction of flow from the hose port to the purge. Still not as efficient as a traditional or direct chamber. Another example of a common chamber hookah is this octopus nautilus that I have over here. The octopus is a much higher quality hookah than the Starbucks Unicus. The price is, is a good indicator. Of, of such a thing <laughs> and uh, this guy's a fully stainless steel pipe it's actually a, a, a beautiful piece um, but when you take it apart everything kind of comes apart the same way as most hookahs and when you take it all apart you have a very similar system the only difference is you have this you have the um, up stem which is solid stainless steel directly connecting into the down stem and heart system where when you unscrew it, it comes apart. So you see more clearly how this is put together. These two pieces kind of just slide right on top of it, right into each other. And the heart is kind of cradled in the center of it. The more important piece to note right now is not the vase, it's not the tray, it's not the stem or down stem, uh, but rather it's the heart you see down here. The common chamber heart of the octopus nautilus is a little bit more uh, apparent of its common chamber characteristics than the Starbucks Unicus was because it's more of a straightforward kind of design. These are just the uh, valves that come out and if we take these apart and strip down the hookah further down to its bare minimum root, you see more of how the inner workings of this particular pipe are. And when you take it apart and you really look at it, you see again, this particular one is a multi-hose, multi-port hookah, of course, which is very popular in the German market. And uh, you see distinct four ports sharing one common internal area. Again, they're at an angle. This saves a lot of production cost. And um, the problem is the same as with any common chamber pipe. It hinders the efficiency of how well it can possibly purge. Now, certain de German uh, designers have created um, certain aspects to the base that helps aid this, where um, I, noted, I noted before that the uh, downstem played a little bit of a part in helping guide the airflow in a way that allows you to purge a little bit better than if it wasn't as thick. And with German designs, and this is actually why a lot of German hookahs have vases, uh, flask shaped, this trumpet style, genie style vases, because the neck is super long and thin. This helps again guide it so it's, it creates more pressure. Uh, now, before we uh, finish this uh, video up, I do want to kind of talk about how this came to be. Now, the first common chamber of hookah on the market, to my knowledge and to my memory, were the Amy hookahs, I'm sorry, the Maya hookahs. Now, the Mayas were Chinese-made, uh, simple little hookahs, super popular because they were super cheap. And they featured the first common chamber hookahs. They were the, back in the days, I remember, it was there was a lot of talk. It was basically KM versus Maya back in the day. And people loved the Mayas because they were so different looking compared to all the hookahs we had on the market at the time. And back then there was only a few different styles and basically every brand that was manufacturing a hookah followed the same patterns, the same styles of design. Uh, basically your typical, you know, Egyptian or Syrian hookah. That said, when Mayas came out, people were excited with the modern looking, interesting designs they had created, but they were all also common chamber, which is very different from the KM. Uh, every region that uh, 
Maya kind of captivated and took over pop popular wise and popularity and sales figures wise started uh, developing hookahs that follow the Maya style of using a common chamber some areas more so than others we see this ever present even in popular hookahs today where even just a couple of years ago mig the very expensive german brand was using a common chamber system for all of their hookahs it's not only more recently that they changed it up and made them you know direct chamber as it should for you know a few hundred dollar pipe um, some other things, the, uh, the uh, Japona hookah from Russia is also a common chamber pipe where uh, I even talked to the owner to some extent. He made certain batches for the U.S. market that were direct chamber uh, per my request. And, uh, but he was very adamant in the fact that, hey, this is what people are used to and this is what sells anyway. So I have no real reason other than you asking me to make him direct chamber. And I had to explain how you know some of us in the United States we know a few things <laughs> and and uh, memories my friends memories and um, long story short because of the impact and popularity of these more inexpensive hookahs because at the end of the day it's sales that matter not you know engineering and quality and you know etc um, we, we see an ever-present presence of common chamber hookahs and the purpose of this video and the future videos on this on this hookah chamber series that we'll be doing at hookah unlimited is to inform you guys what these are and what to look out for and what hookahs to go for thank you guys for watching as always please subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can get these videos as soon as they get launched and uh, i hope i uh, catch you at a hookah unlimited uh, the facebook group and uh, the instagram i, I do uh, live amas two three four times a week so please join me there at hookah unltd on instagram thank you guys have a good one deuces